I'm not sure how to fit that heavyweight comment, so I'm going to know I put on a little pound. <laughs> um, Okay, so this is the third part of the symposium, and I'd like to say that I think Dr. Lackeran and my partner obviously thinks I'm very argumentative because this is the third debate lecture that I've been giving. <laughs> so I try to take that idea. I also have a good sense of the point that my other partner, Dr. Gendy, expressed is that Dr. Gold and I now are the two standing between you all in lunch, and a little different than bread, which is why I've given up the uh, benefit of being the second speaker in a debate, and I forfeited that uh, benefit so that not only really Dr. Gold is the really person in between you and the lunch break. Okay, so why should everyone get an MRI safe device? I have changed the debates, Dr. Gold. So why should everyone get an MRI safe pacemaker? And why is that? Well, there's only one MRI safe pacemaker. We know that there are not MRI safe ICDs yet or CRTs for pending. And we know that to be an FDA approved truly MRI safe system, you need a generator that is MRI safe. You need two leads that are MRI safe. And you need a programmer that can communicate with them. And currently, for other systems, defibrillator, CRTs, etc., they don't exist. Now, for the, to be FDA approved and truly MRI safe, you cannot include any other generator, any other lead, even if it's capped or cut or otherwise, or a single chamber device, a true single chamber device. Because really what we're talking about is new dual chamber pacemaker implants. So what we're going to debate, by the way, is why should all new pacemaker implants be MRI safe pacemaker implants? And the reasons for that, in summary, are that there's a growing need for MRI scans. We'll talk about the growing need for pacing. Present and growing need for, therefore, an MRI safe pacing system, or what's the likelihood of needing an MRI in the future if you have a pacemaker. <clears throat> How standard pacing systems actually can't be substitutes for this, they can be harmful or dangerous in the MRI setting. Why an MRI safe pacemaker is actually safer for the patient as well as the doctor, and if the correct tool is available, it should be used. And the correct tool is currently available and FDA approved. The most important issue, I think, when we talk about this and why we should use MRI safe pacemakers is it keeps your options open. It allows the patient, in the future, the option of undergoing an MRI scan, whereas currently no other system has that capability. Hopefully everyone's staying away. Okay, increasing MRI volume because I can't hang out in coffee. Increasing MRI volume annually, that is very clearly occurring. This is uh, dating back to 1995. I don't know how I can do a pointer, I'm just going to only one screen. So, dating back to 1995, uh, on up, the volume is significantly increased in 2007, it was roughly 27 million. If you take the 2010 Census Bureau population of the United States, uh, on average, 91.2 MRI exams are performed per thousand patients. If we take that out, that equals about 29,000 MRIs per thousand population, or roughly 29 million. So we've gone from 27 to 29 in a couple years, and it's estimated to be uh, approximately 40 million MRI scans in the U.S. this year. Who's ordering? So my first issue when I started thinking about do I need to be using the MRI set pacer is you know, I don't really order that many MRIs. This must not be a really big issue. And obviously that's naive, because if you look at the people who do order, they're not the ones who are putting in the devices, of course. The neurologists, the oncologists, the orthopedists, they're the ones commonly ordering these tests. ER physicians were, in fact, the smallest percentage of people ordering MRIs. So you have to maintain perspective outside of yourself, but sometimes you can lose sight of Why an MRI scan? Why not other modalities? Well, MRIs are often preferred because they uh, give you a lot more detail and clarity, in particular when you're looking at soft tissue issues. It's also the best approach when you're diagnosing soft tissue issues like tumors, orthopedic problems, or joints, uh, as well as neurovascular problems like a stroke. So a mnemonic that I've recently come across, or someone told me, is we need an MRI for tons. Tumors, orthopedic issues, degenerative joint disease, which is obviously very common, and neurologic events for stroke. Okay, what is the prevalence of these comorbidities in general in the population and as we all age? 
Obviously, younger people are less commonly getting MRIs, but as we all get older, 65 years of age seems to be a transition point where the number of MRIs that are ordered in this patient population takes a significant upward turn. So it increases rapidly at that age. Now, if you look at pacemakers, there are about 3 million people worldwide with pacemakers. Roughly 600,000 are implanted annually worldwide. Over 1,000 are implanted in the U.S. per year, roughly. And approximately 500,000 or half a million people have pacemakers currently. If we look at the combination of this now, the number of comorbidities that we just talked about, the soft tissue issues, the tumors, the degenerative joint disease, neurovascular problems, strokes, in pacemaker patients, 85%, 85% of patients with pacemakers overall have at least one or more of these comorbidities. Why is that? Well, let's look at who we're implanting. If we look at the patient age of the people we're implanting with pacemakers, 86% are over 65. Well, we saw there's obviously a huge upward turn in the number of MRIs in, in that patient population, in that age, and we're implanting people, so obviously there's significant overlap. And in fact, over 65, people are twice as likely to need an MRI scan or to get an MRI scan than less uh, people younger than that. Okay, so why do we need MRI scan pacemakers? Well, just describe it. After age 65, the MRI utilization doubles. Older than 65 is obviously 86% of all patients implanted. It's also been estimated that 50 to 75% probability that a person with a device over the ensuing year of the lifetime of the device will want an MRI. A physician taking care of them will want an order an MRI. So more than 200,000 patients, it's been estimated, actually have been refused or denied, I should say, to get an MRI because they have a device currently. If we look at this more specifically in data collected, and this was pulled from um, CMS data uh, in 2007, they just took a general 5% of that, pulled it out, and they looked at patients, 20, roughly 23 million patients in the first line. The number who had had an MRI were roughly 3 million, or roughly 13% per year. And if you look at the pacemaker group, there were significant numbers still getting MRIs, which we'll talk about, but that was only 3% per year. So similar groups, potentially, they, they match their ages and things, and what they identified is that the people with devices, understandably, aren't getting the MRIs that they potentially need. Okay, pacemaker patients are subject to two distinct risks when it comes to MRI issues. First, they're prone now to a less sensitive diagnostic evaluation. So patients who need an MRI aren't getting them. It may be the optimal study to do to make a diagnosis, yet they're not getting them. It can lead to misdiagnosis or underdiagnosis or more extensive procedures to make the diagnosis. Patients also who are being scanned and have a current system are at risk. So these are systems that aren't really designed to get an MRI, yet as we saw, some patients are still getting them and they're putting themselves at risk. Here's, a, here's an interesting example. This is a CT and on your left is the CT obviously, MRI on the right, and this was a delay in diagnosis of a patient. And you can see the errors are pointing to tumor masses that weren't as easily identified on the CT. In fact, they were overlooked the first CT. And when taking more uh, thinner slices, if you will, after they realized there was a potential issue, then they started picking it up on the CT, but initially for a long diagnosis. So is MRI scan scanning safe in traditional pacemakers? We know some people are getting it there. Why can't we just say, you know, we have pacers, there are studies out, we've been looking at this. Studies have shown pacemakers are fine to use in MRI scanning. That is a myth. Okay? There are previous studies. What you'll notice, and I think it's very important to point out, if you look at the first column, obviously, is the reference. The number of patients in these uh, studies, the largest study there is 82 patients. The smallest study, I think, was seven. Five, actually. So these are very small studies. And what the findings demonstrate is, in this one study, there was a two-second pause noted. Another study, they found that they had diminished battery voltage afterwards. There were significant changes in the outputs required, so facing threshold change. Increased capture thresholds were noted. These hazards, these risks, they are real in this patient population, in these groups that are getting studied with our traditional systems. Patient safety can't be guaranteed. Now, it can never be guaranteed, but I tell patients when I talk about anything, is I never say never, I never say always. I always talk to the best, so sorry about that. <laughs> <laughs> but, when you take a device that hasn't been FDA approved, that isn't designed for patients undergo pacemaker uh, MRI scanning, 
you're clearly are putting them at risk. Testing has been limited, the studies are small, there's really insufficient data, the patient safety can't be extrapolated to larger patient populations. And it's gotten to the point where the societies have recognized that. In fact, the American College of Radiology, HRS, American Heart Association, the ACC, they have all said, they all warn the medical devices may malfunction or cause significant problems during an MRI scan. Okay, just because you can do it, doesn't mean it's the right thing to do. So it doesn't mean you should. These gentlemen obviously are, have taken proper precautions, and they're actually using the right stuff, which you can identify as well. They do have straps and things and harnesses. But just because you can do it, doesn't mean it's the right thing to do. Societal statements, again, talk about the risks of using standard uh, systems. So I'm getting flashes over here, so I'm gonna talk fast for a minute now. Okay, the FDA position also very clear. The only way they can consider an MRI safe device or approval of MRIs with patients with pacemakers is if they want to do the proper testing. What's the issue? There are roughly three electro, three areas that create an electromagnetic field in an MRI. There's a static field, a gradient field, and an RF field. And these cause issues with heating and other things. So leak heating can cause thermal cardiac tissue damage. All right, now it's usually at the side of the tip. Unintended cardiac stimulation can lead to sustained tachycardia. Device interactions, the device can malfunction, can affect programming and therapy. The case can be causing a lot of issues with the pocket. Forced torque, the static magnetic field will produce a translation or rotation of the device that can also cause a lot of patient discomfort actually during the procedure. So all these issues, clinical impact actually had a patient that had a documented tachycardia. I'm gonna go through this a little quicker based on time. So the traditional pacemakers clearly put a patient at risk when you put them in for an MRI. Why have there been patients getting them then? Like everything else, it's risk to benefit. If a patient has an, needs emergency surgery and they have high cardiac risk, you don't stop and take them to the cath lab or do an exercise treadmill test. You say you need to do the surgery. So there are exceptions to every rule. However, there is now safety by design, not by chance. Okay, so this system was designed just for this purpose. So using the correct tool is what we're talking about. And the FDA, in February of 2000, in February of this year, gave FDA approval, gave approval to this system for MRIs. So now in Kansas, we always find the best tool for the job. Now in other places, this may not be where you find, but certainly in Kansas, that's the best tool. Not using the correct tool can be a problem. You don't get what you need. You really don't get what you need accomplished. Okay? Why should all pacemakers be MRI safe? Because an MRI safe pacer is available. Now, what about the argument? I just don't want to use Medtronic alone. Medtronic alone, it's great. I don't want to commit to even one company. Okay? Again, if you place an MRI safe leaves, regardless of the generator, you prevent them from getting an MRI safe way now, but it allows the patient to have the option in the future. So do you have to put in all MRI pace, all uh, Medtronic pacemakers to give a patient a benefit? No, it depends on when you think they need the benefit. So you keep your options open. Other other comments that have made against the concept of using MRI safe device is that sure we can do MRI scan, but really all we can scan is the very tip of the head and your abdomen and toes. Well, that's not actually true. That is a myth. The central core, the bore of the uh, imaging, can't be right over the heart, can't be that close to the pacemaker, but it can be positioned so that you can get reasonable imaging of the chest, of the thorax, of the heart, and of the brain. So that is a myth. Medicare doesn't pay for MRI safe devices, also a myth. In April of this past year, CMS actually changed their wording, saying that they felt that there was strong enough evidence to reimburse for the MRI safe system. So they removed the contraindication for Medicare coverage of our MRI beneficiaries to get an uh, uh, MRI if they had a device. So again, why should all pacemaker implants be MRI safe? It keeps your options open, whether it be currently putting in the entire system or looking to the future, recognizing that you may have to do a gen change, much lower risk than a full system extraction in the future. Okay, although all options aren't there yet, defibrillator CRTs, it doesn't mean you shouldn't use an option that is there. Now, should all patients get an MRI safe pacemaker? Here's the disclaimer. Every patient is an individual. Should you just start putting them in everybody? Of course not. 
We're all physicians, we're all healthcare providers, we all look at each patient individually and make a decision. And of course, at that point, you say yes to shit. <laughs> so, in conclusion, don't keep your head in the toilet. Consider your options, consider the options for the patient, use an MRI safe system that is available and it gives you the future options going forward. Thank you. Thank you. It's a really a pleasure to be here. Uh, Kansas City has always been known for their home field advantage. I realized that when I was asked to give a debate. Um, <laughs> first, you don't love my slides. And you change the topic without telling me. <laughs> uh, my, my first disclaimer, I'm a Denver Broncos fan, so I understand what Kansas City does when it comes to town. <laughs> So I have the antagonist position here. Uh, here is a list of my other conflicts of interest besides being a Bronco fan. Um, it is expensive, I'm very conflicted, uh, which means I'm probably ideal to give a debate, um, as I can take any view. Probably after I finish talking to you, I'll have significantly fewer conflicts. Um, there'll be some people very unhappy with me. Um, well, what's the rationale? I think we heard a very nice rationale for MRI safe devices. Many patients undergo an MRI. Predicting who will need an MRI is difficult. MRI safe devices may reduce liability risk, as we have discussed. And if this is the future, why not adopt it now? We used to have debate 15, 20 years ago about should we put in face makers with mode switching in everyone. Obviously, it's moved because all devices have mode switching. So why not use it in everybody? Well, let's first start by we don't have MRI safe pacemakers, we have MRI conditional pacemakers. So the studies have shown that it's safe to be used with a 1.5 Tesla magnet. Uh, many of you probably know that lots of studies being done now with three Tesla magnets, three even larger tests, even larger magnets, so we have no idea that any pacemaker is safe. And certainly the approved pacemaker is not safe uh, with a larger magnet. The FDA approved the labeling of one dual chamber pacemaker as MRI conditional with very strict restrictions on that. However, arguing that it should be used in all patients suggested as a class one recommendation. I'm not aware of any recommendations from anyone other than the manufacturer of this device that should be used in all of their patients. So who can not receive an MRI safe cardiac device? We touched on the talk about this a little bit, but this was actually the topic of the debate. Um, ICD patients can get an MRI safe device. So we're we'll risking their lives every time we put them in an ICD. CRT patients cannot get an MRI safe device. We're we'll risking their lives by making the decision to use a CRT and not a pacemaker. And this already represents about 35% of devices implanted in the United States. So who should not receive an MRI-compatible pacemaker where it's actually contraindicated? Pulse generator change outs. That represents 30% of all pacemakers in the United States. They already have leads in them. Abandoned leads. About 5% of patients, is estimated, have abandoned leads. And in fact, the risk of complications from an MRI is much higher with an abandoned lead than with an intact lead. You see more heating and more complications from a lead that's not attached to a pacemaker. Then you have other metallic clips or other contraindications of MRI. So we're already starting um, with a limited pool of patients. How many cardiac device patients are actually eligible or appropriate to consider MRI conditional devices in? Well, pacemakers are about 65% of all devices implanted in the United States. And about 60% of these patients do not have a contraindication. Therefore, we're talking about less than 40% of devices, or maybe a little more than a third of patients, should even be considered for this type of device. So majority of patients, this is not even an issue or an option. <clears throat> this doesn't even 
This design is miscast as there are no single chamber MRI conditional pacemakers. So if you have a patient that needs a single chamber device for whatever reason, you don't have that option now other than to put in a dual chamber device and not use one of those chambers. <clears throat> so what do we have in terms of AHA position statements? Well, the AHA position statements on this has been that we should use good caution uh, whenever and make sure that the risk outweigh the benefits whenever we make a decision about implanting a uh, implanting a device or doing an MRI specifically in a pacemaker patient. Well, the risk should not outweigh the benefits. Isn't that what we do for all tests and procedures in medicine? Is there something unique about an MRI that all other tests we should just do that willy-nilly, but only for MRI should we weigh the risks and benefits? I mean, this is standard guidelines uh, for how we should be practicing medicine. So patients who have a pacemaker or ICD should not undergo an MR study if an alternative diagnosis is available, and MR imaging should only be considered in cases in which the potential benefit to the patient clearly outweighs the risk. This is unique. I thought that that's what we're supposed to be. This is what we make with everything we do in medicine. Hazards and risks are, quote, real. We've heard some of these things about what these hazards and risks are, uh, but such things as a two-second pause. Now, I would argue that there are a lot of people in this room that if we put a monitor in your sleep, you would have a two-second pause. Is that a reason not to have an MRI if you would have a two-second pause? <clears throat> I would like to know who has ever felt a two-second pause uh, when they've had them. So we've had other minor problems, and almost any serious problems that have occurred have been in pacemakers that are more than 20 years old. Modern day pacemakers, to my knowledge, have not been shown to have serious problems uh, with MRI. A two second pause. Diminished boundary voltage was noted immediately after the MRI, which returned to normal. <clears throat> Significant changes reported in 9% of the lead. In 1.9%, they had to change the output. Not that they failed to catch it, but they had to change the output. <clears throat> so these are the sort of things that we're worried about. So again, the pacemaker that's out there is not MRI safe, it is MR conditional. And we need to remember that uh, when we're sort of making these decisions. <clears throat> What's the basis for this that we say that this was incredible amount of data we have <clears throat> to say that we should use this pacemaker? 464 patients were implanted in 42 international centers who were randomized to either get an MRI scan or not get an MRI scan. So half of them actually didn't get an MR scan. And this was enrollment with only one year of follow-up. So remember that, a little over 400 patients, half of which got an MR scan. Well, we heard that only a few patients in the literature have ever been reported who had MR uh, studies done with pacemakers. Uh, well, actually, uh, I think that was a rather uh, limited view of the literature. I'll show you here the Johns Hopkins experience. Uh, uh, they have a protocol like we do. We had doctors who were in Baltimore before this. Uh, they only used in our pacemakers that were implanted after the year 2000, exclude patients less than six weeks after device implant, uh, which is very similar to what others have been done. The, MR, uh, the devices interrogated pre MRI, they're monitored during the scan, and they're interrogated post MRI, exactly the guidelines for what are being done with an MR safe protocol. And when we look at the changes here, we're talking about no clinically meaningful changes uh, in this group of patients. Uh, while you can think about whether it's a significant the T wave change by 0.14 millivolts, that reached a significant value, but that's clinically irrelevant. I think everyone would agree with that. They've now updated this and have over 400 patients. So in fact, more patients at Johns Hopkins have had an MR scan and was done in a study that led to the approval of the device. So they have more data uh, in this group of patients. And again, no clinically meaningful changes have been noted with scans of over 400 patients at this center. Many other centers and uh, many other data to show uh, the safety of it. <clears throat> what do you need to do uh, as a recommendation by industry, by ACR, uh, patients with a history of 
The town is obviously going to go further investigation of the medical records, radiologic studies, access to written documentation. So what's recommended to be done in any patient is exactly what's written to be done in this group of patients with an MR safe device. There's no difference in how we manage them. You already saw this slide. Again, I would focus a little bit differently on the emphasis here. 25,000 patients in this small sample, this is not all Medicare, 25,000 patients had MRs who had a pacemaker implanted. Not a single report of a major complication. So we talked about the 400 patients in the clinical study. Here's now 25,000 patients. Scanning patients with approved devices to ensure the safe scanning is applied with the MR conditional pacemaker, verify the implanted system. Radiologists have to take the limits from the labeling into account. If needed, you have to reprogram the device. Exactly what you do in any other pacemaker system. So no difference between these two systems. So what are the key conditions for use? Static magnetic field, 1.5 Tesla, a bunch of other things. The MR has to be centered superior to C1 or inferior to T12. While you may be able to see something in the chest cavity or in the neck, any radiologist I've talked to have said you can't trust imaging of the chest or the neck if in fact you're not centered over the chest or the neck. So if you're in the middle of the abdomen, there may be some blurry pictures of what you're seeing up there, but it's not going to be useful in terms of making diagnosis. And you need to do patient monitoring. The key conditions, patient capture threshold has to be less than 2 volts. Certainly for a large group of migratory doctors who send these pacemakers, they've already exceeded that one already. You have to be implanted greater than 6 weeks. So you can't implant this if you're planning to do an MRI soon anyway. So I think there are a number of scenarios that challenge a universal MRI compatible device strategy. Only one device company has an MRI conditional pacemaker. Should this be the only company to be used for eligible patients, whether for their lead or for the pulse generator? Should leads be expanded to allow for a conditional pacemaker? Hopefully no one would subject patients to the risk of explantation simply because you need an MRI in your pacemaker, which again can be safely done and is frequently done. Should a dual chamber pacemaker be implanted in AFib patients or other patients who really only need a single chamber device so they can save from an MRI safe pacemaker? And should pacemakers be substituted for ICDs in patients with both pacing and primary prevention indications so you can put in an MRI safe system? Hopefully we would all agree that the answer is no to this. And then there's the issue of dollars, which we haven't talked about. An MRI conditional pacing system is about $2,000 to $3,000 more expensive than the highest end dual chamber pacemaker system, not the moderate or lower end dual chamber pacemaker system. Given the downward pressure on reimbursement, declining hospital margins, and increasing hospital purchase control of cardiologists, is routine use of this product financially viable? Should we really be thinking about spending another $2,500 on every pacemaker in our system? I think probably not. So just in summary, a majority of device patients do not qualify for an MRI conditional device or it is contraindicated. The restrictions of the current technology preclude important MRI imaging of neck and thorax, including the heart. The precautions and oversight associated with MRI conditional devices are the same as those of standard devices. Multiple studies have shown that MRI imaging in the presence of a cardiac device is safe if reasonable precautions are used. Again, this has been done in tens of thousands of patients. And these leads do not handle well and the systems are expensive. We call it the perforator. Anyone who's handled this lead, it's not a fun lead to use. Therefore, I think it's quite clear in my opinion that not all cardiac devices should be MRI compatible. Thank you. We'll have a brief and two minute rebuttal from the speaker. And after that, uh, we'll conclude the morning session. And after that, we will make an announcement on the last.